All right. Okay. Jamie and I are hanging out in my art studio today, and I'm kind of freaking out. <laughs> I'm freaking out. My heart is pounding like a million miles an hour. Um, part of it is because uh, I'm going live on YouTube, which I don't do very often. I'm I used to I'm used to going live in my Facebook group, which I do once a week. Um, at least I try to, and I don't hang out um, on YouTube Live very much. But I really need to change that because, um, yeah, because we have our own community here as well. So I feel like we need to celebrate that. So today, okay. So I don't know if you saw last week's video, and I post videos every Friday morning. So instead of posting today, editing and doing all that, I am going to go live and talk about. So in, oh God, I'm so nervous. In a short while this afternoon, I am boarding a plane to Scotland. Hi, Kim! Oh good, I'm so happy to see some familiar faces. I always get so nervous. Oh, you're from Raleigh, shut up, girl. I'm in Apex, are you serious? Oh, that's awesome, we're neighbors. So, um, yeah, I'll wait a minute. I have all my art supplies. I thought I would like, pack for my trip but like do it kind of on screen so that you guys can see what I am packing and why I'm doing that so I have two international flights to catch and I also have a four-hour train ride so I'm going to be kind of like going oh there's more people coming in Altina hi Cheryl it's so good to see you it's so exciting. I'm so excited to be here with you guys um, and share my like packing. I thought I would kill two birds with one stone, pack up for my retreat and chat and say hi. And I wanna talk about why I'm bringing what I'm bringing because I think it might be helpful um, to others of you who are like have, maybe you're going on an art retreat as well and maybe, um, or you just travel and wanna know like what art supplies. So if you're like me, you have like a million art supplies, how the heck do you whittle down what you're gonna bring with you? That's what I'm going to talk about today. So number one is this is a little bit different of an art retreat um, because I'm hosting it <laughs> and I'm not just being a participant. So the first thing I need to um, go over is like what I need for my, to be teaching for my class. Now there's people coming from all over the globe and we are meeting up at a uh, Scottish castle, Ward Hill Castle, which is where Game of Thrones, Kit Harrington and his wife got married last July. It's actually her family owns it. And that is where we are staying. So we can't, okay, well, first of all, all the teachers, we are all, and there's three of us, Jenny Mano, Lucy Bryden, who is Scottish and myself. Um, although it was my, it's my, it's my birth baby. <laughs> they were just awesome enough to say yes. So the first thing I need to consider is like, what am I teaching? Well, all of us decided that we were just gonna teach watercolors because they travel the best, right? I think we can all agree. So it's like, what, as soon as you start talking acrylics, you're talking like, oh my God, like so much, right? The tubes are bigger. You have to bring like gesso. You might wanna bring some matte medium. Um, I mean, just those three things alone, just the paint alone, you're talking like tubs and tubs of items right so if you have watercolors you can bring a million colors and pack it very tidily so what i like to do is i like to make um, my own custom palettes um so i have lots of these so <clears throat> i kind of sort my watercolors by brand typically so my top favorite being Daniel Smith always. And so what I've done is you can buy these empty palettes like on Amazon that are just empty. And then you can buy, I buy like 100 packs of these little half pans they're called. And then I, I have not coincidentally, very specifically, I have exactly as many Daniel Smith watercolors as I have spaces for them. And it's taken me years to like grow this collection. So, um, you know, I'm not trying to like, they're very expensive. So I'm not trying to show this off. I mean, this is like five years of collecting. So don't, if you're like feeling behind or stressed, like they're super expensive. Like I did not get these overnight, trust me. Um, so these are the ones that I'm packing. And then I, what I always do too is, cause it's so many watercolors don't look the same in their package as they do when they're out. So I just make these custom little swatches. The lighting is 
super bright in here. Um, I make these custom swatches and they're like by rows. So when I open up my palette, I can see all like what is going on each row. So I have four cards and I have four rows. And so these are what I'm teaching with. Now this palette's like a little bit big for like, because we're also going to be like going and sketching on location at some other castles and some pubs. And so this is probably too big. It's not crazy big, but it is a little bit like uncomfortable to like, I wouldn't throw that in my purse. Oh yeah. Woo. Oh yeah. My, my boyfriend is here. Of course. I'm about to hop this plane to Edinburgh. So I thought Jamie and I could come and represent this morning. Um, and then, so when we are like going on our little excursions and do some like plein air painting, hanging out at some other castles, I did make specifically a little tiny watercolor palette, which I do highly recommend you making. Now, Lucas sent me this package, which is nice. Um, and then I took out like half of them and put in my own colors. So what I did is because I have a lot of watercolors from other manufacturers besides Daniel Smith, this um, little tiny watercolor kit is actually like all one is Daniel Smith and the other ones are not so I wanted to like this way I get to kind of like bring everything that I want to not leave anybody out not that my watercolors have feelings or anything but um, these are like core watercolors which I love they're like really luscious and the Lucas ones that are in there um, and I think there might be one Windsor Newton but this is what I'm talking about when we talk travel and like you know going stopping off at places and just having throwing little things in your purse and then i make a little swatch card for that as well and so that is all ready now if you're making your own little palettes you need to make sure that um you <laughs> leave a time for them to dry so when you score here let me show you because my friend was over yesterday and she didn't had never done this or seen this before so let me show you well, she didn't understand. So a lot of times when you buy like a new little travel palette or any size palette, these will come individually wrapped. So you have to like unwrap those and then you just pop these little suckers in here. They stay like this. But what's cool is that you can change them out. So if you run out of paint, you can refill them with the same color or go buy a different color and you can make your whole, all your own custom sets. And that's what I do. So then we put them in there and I always include my little swatch. All right, uh, Tina's asking, have you ever had trouble getting art supplies through security? Um, no, however, that being said, um, I used to worry about like my water brushes, but like it's, I think they're so minimal that it actually has never come up. I do have, however, have, um, so no, not in terms of like, paints I think if I had if I did have acrylic paint um and I have traveled with those before and no they didn't say anything I think I just put a, I just left them in my bag and no nothing happened I do though have some liquids that I do I am packing and I can't say what they are because it's a surprise project on my retreat but um I do have some questionable travel liquids not questionable in terms of like dangerous or toxic or anything but just um liquid so I am putting those in my check baggage and it scares that out of me because I'm like, oh my God, if they lose my luggage, um, I'm so screwed. But that's like a little bonus. So I made sure like my little extra bonus lesson is the only thing that's being packed in my bag in case my luggage is lost. And then I'm making sure on purpose that everything else is coming with me as carry on because if they lose my watercolors, like I'm, that I'm losing my lesson, right? And also taking my art journals with me. So I'll talk about paper after we, I'll just wrap up the watercolor portion. So the other, only other set of watercolors that I'm bringing is, um, yeah, don't worry about your brush. Your brushes are a non-issue. They don't care about your brushes. Uh, they just care about liquids for, you know, bomb making. Um, so I have the complexion palette by Prima which I did a review on. I genuinely love this set. I won't do any faces without it. It's so easy. It's ridiculous. There's no color mixing. Just make sure, again, make sure you take the time and chart them out. So when you're drawing your faces on the road, which I will always be doing, you can just have easy access to those skin colors. All right, so that's all the paints that I'm taking. Just these little pieces. That's it. And so what I have is I actually got this 
um, bag. This is actually like a bathing suit bag at, what's it called, Bed Bath & Beyond. And I'm putting in it, this is just like a plastic palette for when we get there. And then I'm chucking in my Daniel Smith watercolor package. And then I can also fit in here my Prima complexion set. Um, this one I'm actually going to keep out because these ones I'm going to like have no intention of like reaching in my carry on if I'm on my six hour flight to London. Um, I'm not going to be getting in this bag. This is like these are retreat colors and I'm not going to go in here. So I have two bags I'm taking on my carry on, I'm taking a backpack and I'm also taking this. Oh, sorry, Jamie. This like shoulder bag and that's all I'm bringing on the plane. And so the third bag is my checked luggage. And this has a box of, um, this is what's in that shoulder bag and it's just folders. It's for my lesson. So everybody's going to have a folder and there's a whole bunch of papers. So it's just documents. So that shouldn't cause a problem with security. Um, and so like this is like all zipped up and ready to go in extra pouches here. This is like $5 at Bed Bath & Beyond. So don't be afraid to like think outside the box when you see things like that. It doesn't have to be art supply everything. This is a cool little Windsor Newton like to go cup that's collapsible. So if you're outside of a castle, you buy some bottled water, you have your water bottle with you. You can actually, if you want to use a real brush and you're not just reliant on your water brushes because water brushes are great to an extent and then you, they always leave me wishing I had like a real brush. So this is nice because it collapses. So if you want to use that, you actually have something. And then I'm gonna bring some painters tape with me too. I like to um, tape off pieces in my journal. I'll segue to this. All right, I can't show you everything because there's top secret lesson stuff in here, but this will segue us to the journals. I'm only bringing three journals with me. So I have three watercolor palettes and three journals. So I have extra large. This is my preferred size to work in. It's 11 by 14 and it is a uh, straight up watercolor paper. You can see this one, this one was posted. I think not last week, but the week before on YouTube. This is my lesson for the Fun Fab Drawing Society for this last month of August as well. Oh, and there's my mixed media society lesson for August also. So lots of fun sneak peeks, but I can't show you the next page where I use the painter's tape. However, painter's tape, especially in large journals like that, is you can like tape off, washi tape works really well for this too. You can tape off little sections. I like to do this in my big journal. I'll like make this nice neat section off with my tape. And then I have these little quadrants that I can do little fun watercolors and so I'll do like botanicals or whatever I'm in the mood for, but little sections. And then you need to make sure to watercolor like around it. And then when you peel it off, you have these cool little fresh borders. So again, use washi tape, but washi tape is so expensive. I recommend grabbing some thin uh, painter's tape instead and that works really well. So the, the reason I like this because one, I like to work large, but it's not so large I can't put it in my backpack and I'm gonna put it in right now. Because I'm literally packing. Oh, it doesn't fit in the back there. All right. What's nice about that too is it has a hardcover. So it's like super safe and protected. So I'm planning on doing all of my, when I'm like being the student on those days, I'm going to do my lessons in that. And that way I don't need to worry about like loose leaf papers falling out or anything. It's just like a great, like our journals are the best way to travel and do art. That being said, that one's way too big to like throw in my purse, right? It's huge. So I'm bringing two other ones. So this one is, I love a square. I find squares to be very inspirational. So these are my two little other journals that I'm going to bring. This one, um, I don't know that I would highly recommend it. I love it because of the size. It says that it's cold pressed watercolor paper, which it is, but it's like really lightweight. Um, it's this one. It's by Handbook Journal. And I like it. I don't love it. Just because I like meteor watercolor paper, since I do so much mixed media, I want it to be able to like handle a lot of stuff. It's okay. Um, you know, it does handle a lot of water, which is good. It's fine. It's average. I wouldn't, I don't know that I would buy it again. I might look for something a little bit with thicker paper. Um, 
but you know this is black gesso and it, it, it is holding up well I think it's just like a little flimsy I wish it was like meatier um, but it is a good size so I do like because again I like to work large so even my big small journals tend to be um, bigger yeah you can use artist tape yeah it's all good I mean this is this is painter's tape which is artist tape is just a different color but it's all the same um, just peels off it doesn't have a high adhesion so it just peels off really easily um, and then I have this little watercolor journal, which is so, it was so expensive, <laughs> but I treasure it. Um, and this one I can absolutely chuck in my purse. So it's like this and this and a water brush. Like, are you kidding? This packs in the teeniest, tiniest little area, any purse. So I used to like chuck this into my bag at carpool. And then you know what else is really fun? So this has good quality water paper in it is that, oh, the light is so bright. Um, is that if, so I had a bunch of pages that I like hated because I was color swatching, which is so stupid to do in this sweet little journal. So then I went in and I used matte medium and I collaged over like a million pages. There's a lot of pages in here. So I used matte medium and I fixed like vintage book paper into it. And then I just gessoed a like coat of gesso over a bunch of them. So it's awesome because now I have like some backgrounds already done. Um, I, this is black gesso on like an ugly page. I just, so that's like waiting for something. Um, when I was in Iceland, I was having a beer. So I like took the beer label off and put it in there. It's like a little sweet token. Um, and then I have like watercolors so it's so neat because you can, you can do a lot with watercolor paper. So I strongly recommend only buying watercolor paper because then you can like do anything. You can draw, you can activate anything with water that you want to. Um, it's so cool. So that's, these are the ones that like, if I'm going to be busting out anything to art on a plane, like these are the ones that I'm going to be bringing. And this will be close by me in case I want to. So I'm going to put this in my backpack as well, because that is all ready to go. All right. Um, so that's the paint. All right. In terms of markers, this question came up in my Facebook group this morning. If you're not in my Facebook group, group come on over and join it it's um just search awesome art school with karen campbell and you'll find me there um so someone was asking about the best watercolor markers i feel like i have them all and then people are like i love tombos i love eco lines blah, 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 blah. so i wanted to do a little demo and talk about them that really quick i don't want this whole video to be about that but so i have all of those and i just wanted to give my two cents really quickly because i know it is a question um, Tombos, which are these little skinny guys. Oh, there's someone at my door. What? That is not happening. <laughs> there's someone at my door. I cannot come. I'm doing a live. Sorry, girly. Oh, this is so awkward. So I'm just going to ignore. They can like see me because I have a clear front door. That's really awkward. Anyways, these are my Tombos and they're dual tips. So there, that's a plus there. Is a little nub tip. I know I'm not answering. She's like literally right there. I think it's like a politician or something. Um, there's then they have this really gorgeous luscious brush tip. The huge plus to Tombos is one, they're skinny and small, so they travel really well. You can dump them in. They're not that expensive. They used to be, but their prices have really come down in the past few years. Another plus is that they're mad water soluble, so you can add water. And I just scribbled there. This was Tombow as well. And they really like spread really, really well. I think they went away. Um, the downside of these is that they're not light fast. So they won't stay fresh and vibrant for a really long time, which stinks, right? So yes, they're really great to travel with. They'd be good in an art journal if you're not like ever gonna show them to the light, but like do not use these for like a masterpiece because they will. Fade. I was just at my parents' house. I gave them my first original face I ever painted, and I used um, like Dilution Ranger ink sprays mm -hmm. as the whole background. And um, <laughs> unless it's Jamie, tell them to go away. I know, right? Can't they see my boyfriend and I are like super busy right now? Um, and oh my god, my parents' painting that I gave them is all faded. The background is like washed out, and that's so sad it's like such a bummer so please make sure when you're doing your art if you're doing a master piece like a permanent piece or an original that you're going to sell to somebody make 
sure that the materials you're using are light fast or they will fade. And a lot of like the crafty market, the mixed media things on the market are not light fast. And if they're dye based, they, they don't last. It's like super sad. Um, that is also true for the Ecoline brush pens. Oh, I was gonna say, wait, hang on before I get to those. The last good thing about Tombows is they come in a bajillion colors. So that's another huge perk too. So, I mean, like they have like 20 shades of purple and 20 shades of green and twilight. Like, so if you've ever seen like an in-store display of Tombow markers, they have tons and they have awesome skin tones. They have a whole gray tone set. So like, I am a huge fan of Tombow markers. I just wish they were light fast. But other than that, like I'm a big fan. All right, Eagle Line. I feel like it personally, people love these more than Tombows. Personally, I love them a little bit less. You only have one brush option. They are pretty juicy. They do activate really well. Um, let's see, what's the question? Would a varnish help it? No, because it's like, um, it's like the intrinsic property of just the product itself. So UV late rays, I think will break it down. That being said, I do have like a UV spray, which guards against UV light. So that might prolong it for sure, but there's no guarantee. Wouldn't you like to just dive in with what you know is light fast? Um, also like, so Ecolines are okay. I mean, they have fun colors, but they have a much more limited palette than the Tombows do. And they're juicy and they're fun and they clean up with water. They're great for kids. Um, and they're not expensive. So Weaky Lines are good for that. But again, not light fast. Like Jane Davenport's like her mermaid markers, um, not light fast. Also, I think there's some toxic materials in these two I researched. I did a review for them a couple of years ago. They also, the brush tip pens also like to explode on airplanes. So I don't take brush tips with me on airplanes. Um, so those are out. Um, however, I'm leading up to this. Winter Newton, believe it or not, makes watercolor markers and they are lay fast and they are dual nibbed and they're massively water soluble. The downside for these is that they are pricey. The upside is that they're freaking gorgeous colors and they're the most water soluble. It's like they managed to put like high, high quality pigmented watercolors in a beautiful brush pen so if you're going to buy any and you love watercolor markers i highly recommend windsor and newton watercolor markers because they have all the right things except the price but like you get what you pay for too you know what i mean it's like oh the tombows are cheap but then like they fade in two years whereas like this whatever you create with these beautiful luscious markers like they're going to be there forever and isn't that like nice it's so nice so um Oh, you got some for your prayer for Christmas, Amanda. You're so lucky. So let me just show you. I mean, these are like A plus markers right here. So these are, so look how like, I mean, they dissolve like to nothing. I don't know if you can see that. It's so bright. I'm sorry, my light is obnoxious. But um, they're the best by far. So I had to put that out there because they also are great for travel. So I could take all my colors and they do have skin tones. They don't have a million colors like the Tombow, but they have some solid ones and they have, they do have like, they have, they have a good selection. It's not amazing, but they give you everything you need. And then some, they have a really pretty, I mean, I have lots. Um, so chuck those in a little pouch and like you have your whole rainbow. So that's what I'm going to bring with me. And I'm going to load that in my pouch right now. Oh, by the way, this is Jenny Mannels. Isn't that so cute? She's the, one of the other teachers. And she sells these on Society6. So cute. Thank you, Jenny. All right, so that's the my little marker today that I had to share with you. Um, I am going to bring these. Let's see. So last thing I'm going to say about markers. I am packing these couple from Arteza. I, they sent me a bunch of products. My favorite one from them um, are these littles. Do they have skin colors? They do. The Windsor Newton does have skin colors. Yes. They're not like super skin, but they have like a really pretty pinky peach. I also add like a little gesso over mine instead of water. And then that takes the peach 
kind of to its like happy place for a skin color. All right, so I am taking a few of these um, Twi Markers by Arteza. These are not light fast, but they don't explode on airplanes because their barrel is sealed and they are dual tipped. So if I just wanna do a little doodle, like in my little journal, like this, whatever is coming in here, I don't care if it doesn't last 10 years anyways, like this is just for me. Um, all right, bye Amanda, I'll see you later. So, okay, so why do this instead of a pouch for certain things? Well, I don't know if you're like me, these are the insides of one pouch. <laughs> it's just like this, this like glob of mess. So when I'm like on the airplane and I'm like, oh, I have six hours, I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna like make some art. Like I literally have to like either hunt and gather through like this hot mess or I like dump it out on my little airline tray. And then it's like, you know, you hit turbulence and you have like things rolling on the floor and you have to like reach down and you can't get it. So this kind of thing like eliminates all of that. So you can reach in, you can grab your little thing and then you can have this and just unroll part of it. So you're not like <laughs> intrusive. You can still have your Diet Coke or your wine in your little cup holder. You can just grab your one thing and then, you know, chuck it in your like front back of the seat in front of you. So what am I bringing? I am bringing some of these little twi markers because they have a little, they have the dual tips, which I like having options. I have my um, Pentel Graph Gear mechanical pencils in here because I cannot live without them. So that's all four nibs. It just keeps me organized, quite frankly. I have a little Tombow eraser, like a little, it's like a little baby eraser. It basically takes the place of the little end erasers that you get on your mechanical pencils. I have an elegant, I love elegant writers when I'm traveling. Do you guys ever use those? Because, uh, where do I have that? Oh, I already packed it. That is like, the last time I went to Scotland, I did almost all of my illustrations with the elegant writer. So for example, this spread, all of this dark that you see is elegant writer. So this whole page was only made with three products. My elegant writer and then um, red and green watercolor and that's it so it's it gives it's so luscious and it's so water soluble and you can do all of it with a water brush so that's awesome not that but like the fact that you can do that is awesome right and the cool thing about the elegant writer is when you um put it on and activate it with water it's super water soluble and if you dab some of that freshly applied um, if you dab the paper towel or your towel or whatever into the wet ink and you lift it, it's all pink shows up. So it's like, it gives you this beautiful array of like pinks and purples and blues and blacks all in one pen. It's pretty awesome. So I always make sure I have elegant writers with me. I wish I could show you my little, oh, I'll just show you some of my illustrations from my last trip, but you can just, it's great for like lanterns and stonework castles because you can do sketch the outside of it real quick and just brush your water brush over it and it will like render your whole illustration for you awesome um i also have i have like a permanent uh pen a couple permanent pens because you want to i do a lot of line work over my watercolors and of course you need your white Accents. So instead of taking a tube of gouache or a tube of gesso, you can just do all of your highlighting with a paint pen. And isn't that convenient? Yes, it is. So this rolls up. And I'm going to... I'm literally packing for my trip right with you guys. Button that sucker up. And then that goes in my backpack so it won't get lost in my luggage. All right, then I just have... We're almost done there's like not much to it and then i have this big pack this was a 31 bag 31 is like um very popular it was a few years ago when all the moms sold 31 <laughs> so, so I, I did buy this and i like it because it's monogrammed but it has um it's great for art supplies i think it's made for makeup but art supplies are much more important um so i have the, what do i have in here i have these like clips so when I don't want anyone to see my journal pages, I can clip them together and no one can see, but also it keeps my paper nice and taut and um, not buckling if I'm using too much water. I have pencil sharpener, 
I have always, um, you take a black Prismacolor pencil too um, for outlining. I do all my graphite shading work. I don't know, where's my pen? Oh, here they are. My black wings, my whole book. Oh, my book, by the way, is in motion. My graphic designer is on it. I think she's in like a seven page 70 or something. Oh, been waiting since like May and she's on it. I, I almost forgot to tell you guys, so yee, look forward to that. So I colored my, did my whole entire book with black wing pencils and a black Prismacolor pencil and a couple other mediums, but all the drawings in there are only done with these two pencils. It's insane. So excited. And I have a racer. Also, the other thing I use for my book is a blending stump. You gotta have a blending stump to get any decent shading going. So that's one pouch. In the center pouch here, I do have like a stupid number of watercolor brushes because I just, it's an art retreat. We will be painting all day. So I do bring like my full array of my favorite watercolor brushes. Hi, Belinda. So yeah, and I was at Jerry's the other day and I picked up this extra one because I decided I actually like a flat brush for watercolors. And I just looked at my receipt this morning. It was $29. And I was like, oh, I probably gonna, I already had one that's like just a tiny bit bigger. So FYI, look at the price tag before you buy because some of them are very expensive. Whoops, too late now, already packed up. All right, so then moving on to this third section, I have my water brushes. So I always have water brushes and I also like having like multiples of these because then I can grab one for painting, one for coloring. I kind of have it all. Um, and then in this little side, I have my, a whole cluster of Stabilo Alls. Um, we have a lot of swag for our participants, and I wish I'd remembered I would have included these in their swag bags, but they're actually getting a lot of other things, so they won't be sad. But I did scurry around and I collected up all my uh, Stabilo Alls so I can share them while we're there. An extra little palette. There's a little washi tape in case I want to do like little borders that I was talking about, like in my little baby journal, you can use washi tape. It's perfect for that. It's not like a waste, but then it's not a waste because it just gives it like a new purpose. Oh my gosh. And then, all right, so this is done. So I'm packing this sucker up right now, putting this one in my backpack. All right, so my backpack has all my art journals. It has, um, those two wrappy things that I just did. And then this was the pouch that has the watercolor, uh, my larger watercolor set and the palette. I'm gonna put that in my shoulder strap bag just because, just spread the weight off around a little bit. And that's done. These I can chuck in my shoulder bag. That's done. These I'm gonna put it in my backpack because that'll probably go under the seat in front of me so I can grab those if I wanna art on the go and then the last pouch i'm gonna bring is i wanted to have some like you know i get like agita like knowing that i can't bring my whole studio with me it's like it freaks me out i've packed and repacked like a million times and i'm so terrified that i'm gonna be like Shit, why didn't i bring my gelatos or whatever it's like very nerve-wracking to leave home without everything i'm sure you guys know the same feeling but i'm bringing these metallic markers just because i want to <laughs> I can't, I have no use for them, but I like, I feel like I can't leave home without metallic markers, like paint markers. I feel like I have to have these. So this is my pouch of things that I just want to have, like want to. Okay, always a water brush, always have it in every pouch, any pouch, it's in my purses. All right, I'm packing up these Graphitones. These are like, um, water soluble graphite, but like times 10. The effects you can do with these are really like insane. So I'm bringing those. Don't need them, bringing them. Um, Jenny Mano wanted us to bring some colored pencils. I think she's doing watercolor and colored pencils. I don't actually like coloring with colored pencils very much. It's not very satisfying to me. <laughs> um, oh God, no, I collect brushes like crazy. Um, so instead I'm packing water soluble pencils because then it like gives me the colored pencil need checks off the box. I guess I have colored pencils, but then if I just have the urge to like put some water over them and to blend them into my 
creation that's already in water colors, like they all work together. So guess what? I can do that too. So it's like the best of both worlds. So sorry, Jenny, I'm not really following your rules. I'm not bringing colored pencils. Ah, but I am bringing watercolor pencils. So that's close enough. And then there's kind of extra room in there. Oh, and then I am going to make, I am going to bring a separate pouch, like I said, for those Winter Newton markers. It's also fun just to like demo for other people too. And people don't have experience with them that I can show them what they're capable of and if you want to try them. All right, so that's packed up. Putting those in one of these bags. And then the very last thing that I feel like you have to have if you're traveling on the go or if you're going to an art retreat is you need some inspiration and reference pictures. So, because sometimes you're not on, you know, Wi-Fi and my iPad doesn't have Wi-Fi access. So I'm bringing like a small collection of mag magazines and books and pictures that I find super inspirational. So for example, actually one of the participants and she's one of my biggest supporters on Patreon, um, gifted me this fairy forest. So there's all these like tarot cards inside, which are fantastic for references. Plus there's multiple cards so I can pass them out to people. And if everyone wants to have their own reference card, they can do that. I have to bring the sketchbook of Brian Froud because I'm obsessed and I'm going to Scotland where fairies are everywhere. So, um, this is very inspirational. It gives, shows his early sketches. These are like unpublished sketches of Brian Froud. And it's nice because it's small, so I can pack that up. Are you guys familiar with the Enchanted Living Magazine? Because it is super random and super awesome. Um, so I, I, one of my friends, um, she's actually Australian, and I think she's joining us next year for the retreat, um, turned me on to this magazine. It used to be called, Fairy Magazine. This is a back order issue. Um, and they have since changed their name to Enchanted Living. And it's like, it's like so, it's like my secret, like guilty pleasure. <laughs> because it's like all fairies and like mermaids, but then they like bring it all to life. And the, the pictures in all these magazines are like luscious. They have recipes, like one of them has like recipes on like how to make fern soup and they have themes of every issue. So they have like mermaids. This is like the woodland fairy issue. They have this, um, their latest one was the Art Nouveau issue. Like shut the front door. I'm not leaving these at home. So these are great because you can travel with them. They're like mini books, you know what I'm saying? So I am bringing these three mags and Brian Froud's sketchbook, and then this fairy forest. And like, I'm gonna bring those with me too, because how fun would that be to pass them around? People can look at them, get inspired. Um, I don't know if you've ever been on an art retreat before, but like they're very like transformative experiences. There's like something about sitting in a room of, the, of a group of people who all like get art the way that you do, and who are like in the throes of recreation, like that, feeling that you get of like flow and happiness when you're like sitting down at your own art table to do art is like just magnified by having a whole room full of people that are all doing that at the same time. So I highly recommend you checking out to see if there's an art workshop or a retreat in your area um, and trying to get over to one because they're really like contagious. And I also find like that it's like, it has like a really long-term effect too. So like after the retreat is over um, or after they end, I find that like that creative, like kick in the butt and like that energy, um, it carries me like six months. Like I usually come home with either so excited because I just learned something new or I've been just really like prompted to, to get out of my comfort zone or I saw someone else was doing a technique I'd never seen before or just like the beauty of the work in general, the friendship, like it's contagious and it kind of just like goes on for like a while. So if I highly encourage you guys to go on one, even if it's like a one day long class that you can find in your local art center, like do it. It's really, really, really cool experience. Um, so I leave in a few hours. This is my retreat, Scottish Castle Art Retreat. Um, you can find, if you want to sign up for the interest form for next year, you can find that at awesomeartschool.com. Um, yeah.
I'm going to link to last week's video, which is the whole backstory of how this retreat got started. And um, I should be going live from the castle next week. So stay tuned. I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. And I don't even know how to turn this off. Okay. Bye. I'm reaching over. Bye, Jamie. Jamie says bye. Er